Alright, here's a new project. We have a number of these boards laminated up with oak and walnut. I'm going to cut them into smaller pieces and glue them together again. I'm going to do it on the sled. And because it's a heavier piece of wood, and i got to use almost all of this board, I need a way to hold it because when it gets out here, I don't want to be trying to hang on to it. So what I've done is I've got a piece of wood that pivots. And it'll come over here and it'll lock that in place along with this. And I'll be able to cut those off and hang on to it here and then back here as a handle. So let's uh, get the blade set to the right height and I'll show you how it works. I'll show you how I glue these together. I've made a clamping fixture where the pieces will, will go in like this and this will squeeze them all directions towards the center and it will make good glue joints. So here's the procedure. As soon as I get a little pressure on there, they slide into position. And when I know they're there for sure, I just tighten it up. And definitely an abundance of glue that came out, but that also helps them locate their self. They, they're able to slide into place. Okay, I have 12 of these pentagons glued together. The side should be 72 degrees in order for it to be an equal pentagon. But the sides are square and for me to assemble that into a shape I need to cut 31.72 degree angle on that. So I have my blade tilted that way. I set it with a digital angle finder like this. I've cut a couple pieces just to test the angle. It looks pretty close. So I'm going to cut one of these and uh, show you how I assemble it. And I'll show you how I'm going to hook them together and hopefully get good glue joints. Let's go ahead and cut one. Okay, so what we're going to do here is line the corners up. We should be able to fold that together like that. So it's really a matter of getting glue in between here, pull them back together, and let them set. So here there's three pieces that are taped together and I'm getting glue on it. And I'm about ready to fold them up and I'll let them sit for a while. So here I'm gluing the fourth piece on. Now because of the thickness of these pieces, it's easier to do one at a time. Right now there are seven pieces that are glued on and I'm gluing the eighth on and we're getting really close. Things are fitting pretty good. As soon as this one's glued in, I'll just have one more to go. All right, last piece. This one I 
had to do a little custom fitting on it. The rest of them I didn't. Goes in there pretty nice. I can see a good joint up on the top. Okay, here it goes. I like to see the glue squeeze out like that. Okay, this is all glued together and uh, I finished gluing it up yesterday and I think I'll go ahead and make a decision on what I'm going to do. <laughs> I like the looks of this so much the way it is. I thought about not turning it. But I used a lot of material making this so I could turn it. Made them a lot thicker than they would need to be if it was just going to be left as a dodecahedron. So we're going to turn it. I think I'll end up with maybe half of this left for a glue joint once it's turned. And that was the reason to make it that thick. Let me get it in between centers and we will start turning it. So I've taken the point out of my live center here and I'm just using the opening here on the spindle and I'm going to put this corner in here and I'll tighten up the tailstock against it and make sure that it centers itself. That feels pretty good. Let's see how it uh, how it looks spinning. Looks pretty round, so that's all I really need to do is turn it until that's pretty close to it. I have a template. I'll check it with it. We're happy with that. We're going to turn it on to cup centers. Okay, freshly served 5 8 bowl gouge, and we're getting. Now we're doing about 725 right now, just to test it. Okay, I'm going to work on uh, this much of it here and try to get it to be spherical in that area. And then I think we need to take it and turn it 90 degrees and get these ends. Alright, it's time to rotate this 90 degrees so I can remove these nubs. I've got a cup center here that's in my chuck and this cup center here is drilled and tapped and it's on the threads of the live center. This line that I put on here, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to line it up so that it's down the center. parallel as I can get to the uh, axis. Alright, I'm going to start out with the 5 8 bowl gouge and we're doing about 700. We're going to just gently take that nub off.
that's actually pretty good. So what I'm going to do is go this way about 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm just rotating a little bit at a time now and taking little high spots off. These are all good. There's a small one right here. I'm going to get all that done and uh, come back when it's time to sand it. So I went ahead and rotated this two or three more times. I went over it with the scraper and I think it feels pretty good. So now it's time to sand it. I'll show you a little sanding on here, but we'll do the same thing. We'll sand this, rotate it 90, sand it again, maybe rotate it 45 a couple times, go through all the grits. I'm going to start with 80 grit and uh, probably go to 400, so I'll have to rotate it every time I do it. So I'll show you a little bit of what's going on. Okay, that's how I'm going to sand it, and you don't have to watch all of that, but I'll be back when we decide what finish we're going to put on. All sanded to 500, and I'm going to put on some sanding sealer, and I'm going to use the uh, Minwax water-based, and then I'm going to use the polycrylic for the final finish. Probably get a couple coats of the sanding sealer on it. And then we'll put however many it needs of the polycrylic. So I'll see you soon. Well, it's all done. This has been a long process because I worked on it just when I felt like working on it. So it was a couple of months in building this. I started at the same time I did the plywood one and I just didn't want to have them both out there at the same time so I wanted to give it some time in between so I took my time working on it. It's made out of 12 pentagons. Each one of these pentagons have five separate matching pieces and they're made out of a laminated strip with uh, walnut and oak and I wanted to have my own design on here. The plywood one, if somebody already made a plywood one there's nothing much you can do about having it look too much different. So I decided I wanted to have my own little design on here and I'm pretty happy with it. I finished it with the Minwax water-based sanding sealer and then I used the Minwax polycrylic and boy oh boy did it put a nice finish on this. Many many coats. I wiped it on there at least 20 times but it really dries fast. And again, I don't get in a hurry for things like this. When it had cured for a couple of days, I used Axe Abrasive Paste on it, and then I used this polishing paste. And this thing looks like a marble, and it feels like a marble, but it's as heavy as a bowling ball. I made the pieces extra thick because I drew this up in a CAD program, and it was telling me that between one to the other piece, it was going to get real thin. I don't know if it did or not, but I'm not going to cut it open to have a look. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the process of watching this being made. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. And for those of you who are, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment. I read them all. Also, share the video. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.